Okay, good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you this morning. Good morning, Nicholson. I'm being well, thank you. Sorry for the, uh, you know, we couldn't take your question on the class on Monday. Uh, I actually had some problem with my headset, but I realized that when I was zooming it and, you know, putting it on that I had reduced the volume and hence I was not able to hear all of you. And uh, in the next class, when I had third hour, it was like, uh, I totally not hear anybody. I thought there was some problem with the, the headset, but I realized that the volume had uh, gone down uh, completely and hence I was not able to hear and I was trying to fix it through all possible ways. Anyway, uh, are you able to hear me clearly? Yes, ma'am, you are very clear, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, before we uh, begin class today, can uh, one of you lead us in prayer, please? Can I ask Paul to lead us in prayer? Let's pray. Father Almighty God, your word says where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. We are gathered in this class to hear your word. We intend to go and spread your word to the, to the congregation as your disciple. Father, give us the wisdom and understanding. We pray and declare this in Jesus Christ's name, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Paul. So uh, last week we uh, looked at which chapter in Doctrinal Foundations, Systematic Theology. Anyone remembers what we learned, which chapter we looked at? No one remembers? Okay, thank you, uh, Nicholson. Uh, Trinity, okay, we looked at the doctrine of Trinity. Thank you, Anita. Uh, you all remember what are the things that we learned in the doctrine of Trinity? You can unmute your mics and answer, or you can even uh, you know type it out in the chat section. Just one or two points that you gathered or you learned. About Trinity. We learned that uh, God is in three persons and each is full of God. Okay, thank you, Rubega. Uh, uh, we learned that uh, we, have, we serve or we worship or we have one God who eternally exists or reveals himself as two persons Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And each of them are equally God. So that is the definition of Trinity. Thank you, Rupega. Anyone else? Anything you remember about Trinity? He is one in essence and three in person. It's okay, thank you. The 12 of us, and I'm sure each of us can at least mention one thing that you all learned. I'm waiting for more answers about what we learned in the Doctrine of Trinity. The Father creates, Jesus implements, and the Holy Spirit administers. Okay, so what is what you just mentioned is what the goals of. Uh, the roles that each one of them have, okay, they are one in a sense, uh, but uh, you know, three in person, so each one of them are equally God, each one of them are God. So, how are they different in just in the way they their roles? 
Okay, so they said that the Father creates, uh, Jesus implements, and the Holy Spirit administers. Okay, then uh, John is, uh, thank you, John, for, uh, and thank you, Nicholson, for mentioning that. Thank you, John, for writing uh, and stating the three statements that we try to summarize the teachings uh, in the Bible about the doctrine of Trinity. Yes, God is three persons, each person is fully God, and there is one God. Okay, good. Thank you all for answering. Anyone else wants to share what you learned about the doctrine of Trinity? last week when we studied about it in chapter 4. Okay, so just a, a recap of what we uh, studied in chapter 4. The doc yes, go ahead, Lubega. Yes, okay, you raised your hand. Okay, I was saying that you taught us about two, three verbs, uh, plan, implement, and administer where the Lord God plans and our Lord Jesus Christ implements at the same time the Holy Spirit administers. Yes. Thank you, Rubega. We just looked at it because Nicholson has also given us the same answer in the chat section. And he said that, uh, you know, when we were talking about uh, the essence and the person of, uh, of uh, Jesus, or the Trinity, sorry, he said that uh, they are one essence, but three in persons, and we try to understand uh, what is uh, the meaning of essence and what is the meaning of person. And he said that they are not the same terms, they don't mean the same thing, but they are different. And then we looked at what each of those terms meant and uh, the differences, uh, but how they relate to or uh, when we study about the uh, Trinity, the doctrine of Trinity. And um, uh, we said God is one, uh, and we try to understand or comprehend this whole thing about Trinity with our. Uh, Finite minds, we try to understand this infinite God. We said that they are different in their uh, roles and not in their being, because they all of them have the same being. That is what makes each one of them God, and they are God. And so we said that in their roles, they're different. The Father creates, the uh, Jesus implements, and the Holy Spirit administers. But even their roles, there is perfect unity and oneness in the way they uh, function. So thank you, Rebecca. Okay, so in uh, lesson four, we studied about the doctrine of Trinity. We, we looked at what the meaning of the word Trinity is. We defined Trinity. Uh, we also looked at the passages in the Old Testament uh, which suggest or imply that God exists as more than one person. Uh, and we looked at uh, a few passages in the New Testament where uh, you know all three persons of the Trinity are named together. We also saw uh, in the doctrine of Jesus where uh, the Trinity is action. Uh, and then we tried to summarize uh, the biblical teachings on uh, the doctrine of Trinity. We mentioned three statements uh, as John Paul has, uh, you know, has put in the chat section that God is three persons. Each person is fully God and there is only one God and we uh, examined each of these statements. Uh, we looked at it in the light of scripture and we came to an understanding about Trinity, okay? Then we saw how God is one, he is one in essence. Uh, we saw how God is three, he is three in person. And then we looked at what's the meaning of essence and, essence and person. And we said they are not the same thing, uh, they differ. And also how they relate, we saw how they relate with each other so that we can have a complete understanding of uh, Trinity. Okay, so we saw how they relate, and that's how uh, uh, Nicholson and uh, Lubega has mentioned. Okay, so uh, thank you for uh, uh, you know uh, giving uh, just sharing about what you learned about Trinity. So with that, we will move on to chapter five. Unless any of you went through your notes and you have any questions, any doubts, uh, anything on chapter four. I have a doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah. So some people ask if uh, Jehovah is same as Jesus or Jehovah is same as Father God. So how do we 
uh, answer them. Okay, for that we need to go back to the name of uh, you know uh, Jehovah. Uh, what is that we studied about Jehovah, right? Uh, it's actually the, the the word root word is Yahweh, and because people could not pronounce uh, the name uh, Yahweh, uh, you know they had a, a, a an equivalent name that is Jehovah, which they would uh, say. So Jehovah is a is a name exclusively just meant for God, other than Adonai, and which means Lord, uh, which we saw when we studied about the names of God, that Lord also is ascribed to people who are masters in, in authority. But the name Yahweh is, is exclusively just used for God, the God of the New Testament. And uh, since they could not take this, they had fear to take the name of Yahweh, so they had this uh, another name which is uh, Jehovah. And uh, if you have to answer them, uh, John, then you can answer them from all that we had learned in chapter one, uh, where we looked at, uh, you know, uh, how Jesus is uh, uh, is God in Christology, his equality with God the Father. And when he uses, uh, when Jesus says, uh, you know, before Abraham was, I am. So you uses the name that was, uh, you know, which God ascribed to himself, I am, and as Yahweh, as Jehovah, he says, uh, you know, uh, I am who I am. And uh, Jesus ascribing uh, that name uh, as I am proves that he is uh, God and uh, proves that he is equal to God the Father. And because we believe in Trinity that God, uh, uh, you know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, are the, you know, all, all three uh, are the, you know, God, uh, they have the same essence of the being of God and what makes them God. And so we see that, you know, we can't bifurcate them and say, you know, can we ascribe the name Yahweh or Jehovah or, uh, you know, to them because they are God. And so the name Yahweh is exclusively used for God. And hence we can, uh, you know, when we talk about it, uh, yes. Uh, we uh, we think about uh, Jehovah as uh, you know as uh, the uh, as Jesus also because he's equal with the Father, and uh, we see that uh, people can try to understand Yahweh as only God the Father because they see more of uh, God the Father in action in the uh, Old Testament uh, rather than. Uh, God the Son and uh, you know God the Holy Spirit. And we see the work of the Holy Spirit was uh, you know uh, uh, just came on people for a certain period of time uh, when God had a specific purpose for them to fulfill. The Holy Spirit would come enable them, and when the work was done, the Holy Spirit would use them. But we see that the work of the Holy Spirit and we see Jesus more in the New Testament. And hence, uh, you know, uh, so people can have this whole idea. But yes, uh, Yahweh means God and Jesus is God. So, yes, we could use the term even for the, and because Jesus says, I am. Right? And uh, we, we also saw and studied that uh, he is God. So does that answer your question, John? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Okay, so anyone else has any question about Trinity? No? Okay, if not, we will move to um, chapter 5. Yes, Joy, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I do. Um, I have this question about when we are praying um, and we have this three concepts and these three persons um, how can we differentiate them like when do I know that I'm speaking to the Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son and if I'm speaking to the Holy Spirit it's not the Father and the Son answering either <laughs> you know like all this concept that can just um, conf make like a little bit the relationship confusing because sometimes people say you have to pray to Jesus or you have to pray the Father or you have to pray the Holy Spirit 
but if they are one, how does that affect their relationship? Or maybe they are praying? Okay, uh, thank you for that question, uh, Joy. It's a good question. It does not affect God in any way because uh, all of what we are trying to understand about Trinity is about us with our finite minds trying to comprehend and understand an infinite God. And hence, we've come up with the doctrine of Trinity, trying to understand God. Uh, but, you know, uh, God is not, uh, there's no complications within themselves because he is just one God. And uh, uh, so there's no misunderstanding, there's no confusion. We think there is confusion because we think about three persons. And when we think about three persons, we think about, uh, in human terms, uh, you know, three people which were totally different from each other. Okay, and we try to understand about persons in the in the previous class we studied. We said, uh, you know, uh, it's not the same way we try to understand God, who is one God in three persons. Um, but all of it is uh, God has revealed Himself uh, in person. So uh, as a person, as a personality, let me say that uh, that's a better word, personality, so that we can try to understand. Him, we with our logical thinking, reasoning, our finite minds will be able to comprehend and understand uh, God. Okay, but uh, within themselves, there is no confusion because there exists no confusion because they, there is only one God and they both work in perfect unity. Okay, and so we saw or when we try to understand Trinity, we said, uh, you know, they are one, the same being, but you know, for our understanding. Uh, uh, you know, they differ in their roles. And so we said that, uh, you know, uh, the, the father is the one who is, uh, you know, uh, uh, the one who uh, creates, the one who, sorry, plans things, uh, his supreme authority, he is the one who speaks, who implements it, and the Holy Spirit is the one who administers it, okay? So when we pray, we just pray to God, but you know, sometimes we can tap on each one's uh, roles. For example, uh, you know, uh, uh, when we want to understand what uh, God's will is, uh, we can ask the Holy Spirit because we know that the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us, who guides us, who reveals uh, things to us, and He's the one who reveals uh, the heart of God or the mind of God. Okay. Uh, to us. So whatever is in the heart and the mind of God, when we're talking about God here now, we're talking about God the Father, is what the Holy Spirit will reveal uh, to us. He will make it known to us because He's the one who's our teacher, our counselor, uh, our, uh, our guide, and who reveals truth to us, who makes known the will of God uh, to us. But it's God the Father who, you know, who plans. So we can ask God, you know, um, I thank you, God. For, you know, for the plans that you have for me, plans to prosper me, uh, you know, plans to give me hope and a future. Uh, please, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, reveal uh, the heart of God, uh, you know, what is God's plan for my life in this area. Whether it's for the education or whether it is uh, for marriage or whatever. Okay, uh, then if you want, you know, you are trying to... Uh, uh, you know, pray for something or some or somebody and you don't know what to uh, pray for, we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit in Romans 8 says, you know, He intercedes for us on behalf of the Father. It grows that uh, with words that the uh, you know uh, that words cannot express. Uh, you know, so he uh, he's the one who uh, intercedes on us. And we also see that we have a great interceding high priest, uh, Jesus, who intercedes on behalf of us. So uh, we tap on uh, him as well. Uh, I mean, or we just go to him and we mention Jesus, you know, please help me. Or, the, you know, when we forgive us our sins, uh, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Uh, you know, uh, when we're just praising God, we just praise him for his grace, his mercy, his compassion, his favor, uh, his love. So in general, uh, but when we say, you know, uh, when we thank each one of them, we can thank them specifically for what they have done. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Uh, we need cleansing, we need washing. You know, we can ask Him to cleanse and wash us. Uh, uh, he also sanctifies us. The Holy Spirit also sanctifies us. So, you know, so just depending on each one's uh, roles, you know, we can, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
at those points just mention uh, their names and uh, you know pray and ask uh, help or uh, you know whatever need you have uh, but if it's too confusing for you then don't worry just generally pray God you know uh, or to say, God, I thank you, God, I thank you, or Father, I just thank you. That's enough. I mean, they understand this. It's not going to confuse them. Like, okay, now who's going to go and answer joy about this thing or, or that thing? It's not as complicated for them uh, as we think or imagine. Uh, it just works for every problem. So you can, if it's a confusion in your mind, you can just talk, about, talk to God. Okay. But if uh, it's not confusing, you can always uh, talk to, the, to each one of them based on uh, their roles as revealed in the word cards. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, thank you, John. Good question. Okay, any other questions? No questions, then uh, we will move on to chapter five, uh, the doctrine of man. Okay, um, and we look at the uh, man in the image of God. Okay. Uh, in some you read Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 2, please. I request all of you to have your Bibles open uh, so that, you know, when I call out references, it will be good for all of us to read. Uh, usually just, just uh, two or three of them in class will read, but we are 16 of us and I would like to hear all of your voices. So. I would request you all to open your Bibles and uh, unmute your mics and uh, please agree. We are lucky to hear the other voices as well. Okay, so can one of you read uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, please? Genesis chapter 1, verses 2. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the spirit of and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Thank you. So here we see that uh, in the beginning, you know, the earth was formless; it was empty. There was darkness, uh, but spirit of God was there. Okay, that means God existed at that time. Uh, he was there. Okay. So this was clearly states to us that uh, God created the universe out of nothing. And the Latin phrase is ex nihilos, which means out of nothing. Okay, so there was nothing in the world and we know that God spoke and everything came into existence, everything came into being, um, uh, which means that before God began to create the universe, uh, nothing really existed except God himself. And it was God who created this universe uh, with his word, and we studied quite uh, in depth about this um, in uh, systematic theology and Christology as well. Okay, then we see that uh, of all creations, God created man in a very, very uh, special way. He was quite different from the rest of creation. Uh, so, how did God create man? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Can one of you read that, please? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. <clears throat> the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed it into his nostrils, the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Thank you. So here we see that uh, God created man out of the dust of the clay or the mud of the uh, earth, the ground, and he breathed uh, into his nostrils. That means when he breathed, he imparted uh, you know, something uh, that is in himself, he imparted his very life into our being. And so we all have uh, the breath of God, the life of um, uh, God in us. And uh, we see that man became a living being. Now, how did God create a woman? Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. Can anyone else read that, please? Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. And the Lord God Genesis caused deep sleep to, fo to fall on Adam, and he slept. 
And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Thank you, Zinutubi. So we see God created a woman from man's body, okay, out of his rib, and he put flesh on it, and then uh, he created a woman, and he brought uh, the woman to the man. <laughs> Sorry. Let's, uh, can somebody read Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, please? Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> This is the book of the generations of the descendant of Adam, of Adam. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them, male and female, and blessed them and named them. Mankind, at the time, they were created. Thank you, Joy. So uh, when we look at uh, this uh, two verses in the uh, Hebrew, the Hebrew word for Adam, for man, which is uh, mentioned in verse 1, where it says, in the day that God created man, so the Hebrew word for Adam, man, and the Hebrew word for mankind, uh, which is in verse 2, where it says, and we call them mankind, uh, you know, all have, have the same Hebrew word. So the Hebrew word used for the word Adam is also used to refer to man and mankind, which means it's used to refer to the male human being and the human race. Now, when we look at this, uh, you know, we, we shouldn't think that God has been partial, uh, you know, or the, he's been insensitive uh, to uh, us as women, but uh, this, all these words originated from God himself, uh, okay, because he only calls man man and woman woman, and, uh, and since it's originated with God himself, we should not find it objectionable or insensitive, okay? So we know that God is not partial um, uh, by using the same uh, word that we use for Adam, for man, and for mankind, the same thing. Uh, you know, we don't think that uh, if he's insensitive or he's being partial or we can't raise any objections because we know that uh, God is impartial. Now, this is just, you know, uh, for our knowledge, uh, for our understanding. Okay, uh, we read that God created. We uh, we know that God created man in His own. In the blank, God created man in His own image. image. <laughs> yeah, thank you. God created man in His own image. Okay, uh, Genesis chapter one verse twenty six. Uh, can one of you read that, please? Genesis one twenty six. Genesis 1 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the cre creatures that move that move along the ground. Thank you. Um, so here we see that uh, God says, Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Of course, again, talking. Uh, you know, I mentioned about Trinity, us, plural words, us, our, uh, our image, our likeness. Now, what do you understand by this word image and likeness? And God says, let's make, uh, create man in our image, our likeness. What did God really mean? Any thoughts on this? Pastor Kamageda, I, I was like, I didn't, I don't comprehend the question, please. Sure. So I so we read Genesis chapter one, verse twenty six, and we said uh, it says, and God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. So I said, what do, what did God mean when He said, let us make man in our image or in our likeness, or what do you understand? Uh, that we are created in the image and the likeness of 
Okay, Shubhashi says that uh, emotions, intellect, and will. So, what do you mean by that? You mean that uh, God created us uh, with the same emotions, intellect, and the will just as He has? Is that what you mean, Subhashi? Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Um, any maybe like body, mind, and spirit could be. Okay, thank you, Joy. Yes, Lubeka? I think apart from the physical body, but uh, before the fall of man, we were uh, like God, uh, not in physicality, but in spiritual, emotionally, intellectually, in the way we would think before the fall. But after the fall, some things went in out of ray. Out of ray. Okay, thank you, Lubeka. Yes. You're right. Yeah, so we can't say that physically we are like God. Why can't we say that we are physically like God? Why can't we say that physically we are like God? God is not a, he is a spirit. He has no physical body. Yes, thank you. So God is a spirit. Uh, yes, God is spirit. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Rubella. And God is spirit, and He doesn't have a form or a shape. But we, when we studied about the doctrine of God, we said that He is not some formless, jelly like uh, being. Uh, he reveals to us as a person. And um, so, when we say that we, uh, you know, are in the created image of God, that means we have a mind, we can think like God, uh, you know, we have emotions. Uh, uh, that we, uh, you know, can respond to God. Uh, we have a will where we are able to understand the will of God or do His will. Um, okay, so when God created us in His image, He basically created us like Him because, uh, you know, uh, we have a mind that we can comprehend God, we can understand what He's saying, we have ears that we can hear Him. Uh, you know, uh, like God, we have eyes that we can see. Um, of course, when we talk about it, we talk about it more. We can see God, hear God more in, in our spirit man, uh, but also God uses our physical faculties uh, to communicate to us, to speak to us. Um, so when we're talking basically about, uh, you know, uh, God made man in the image of God, or, uh, you know, what do we mean? Okay, uh, we can use this uh, definition. Uh, the fact that man is in the image of God means that man is like God and represents God. Okay. Now, when we say God, or uh, when we say uh, we are like God, or when we say that uh, you know God, we are made in the image and likeness of God. Uh, you know, it means that God planned to make a creature similar to Himself. Okay. Uh, to make a, a creature that was similar to himself. And so we need to understand what is this word similar, uh, or image or likeness we really mean. Uh, the Hebrew word for image and the Hebrew word for likeness refers to something that is similar but is not identical. Okay. Uh, I repeat that the Hebrew word for image and the Hebrew word for likeness uh, refers to something that is similar but not identical to the thing that it represents or is an image of. Okay, so the word image can also be used of something that represents something else. Okay, so here when God created us His image and in His likeness, uh, He created us uh, not just identical to Him but something that represents uh, Him. Okay. Uh, so these terms had a very quite clear understanding or uh, 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 meaning in the minds of uh, the readers, the original readers uh, back then. Uh, the Jews understood uh, or the people understood what is the meaning of image or likeness. That is not something exactly identical, uh, but that is something that represents, uh, you know, something else. It's not identical. Uh, 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 the thing that it really represents, okay? Uh, because image and likeness had these meanings, uh, 
you know, and it was very clear in the mind of the original readers. Hence, uh, we see that scripture uh, did not need to elaborate on this uh, saying that uh, what it really means or the fact that man is made image of God means that man is like God in the following, that he has intellectual ability, uh, moral purity, uh, spiritual nature, uh, you know, dominion over the earth, uh, creative uh, ability to make uh, ethical choices and immorality like God. So the Bible didn't have to explain that or uh, expand on that because it, uh, uh, this word image and likeness uh, had a very clear meaning in the, in the mind of the person, in the people, uh, the original uh, readers then back then because they knew it was not something very identical but something that represents something uh, else, okay? So when we say that God created us in his image, uh, we say that God was without sin. He created us to be without sin, okay? Uh, God uh, had a mind to perceive and to understand. He gave us a mind to perceive and understand him, okay? Uh, God never dies. He created us never to die. Uh, uh, God, uh, you know, uh, has uh, a will. He gave us a will to choose. Uh, that's why, you know, uh, uh, Adam and Eve, uh, God had given them the free will to make their own uh, choice. And uh, so we see that all of these, in all of these things, you know, uh, uh, God created us just like Him. But like Rubeda said, that when we sin, uh, everything changed. Okay, uh, we were. We were not like God, uh, we were not uh, sinless, but now we were filled with sin. Uh, we were created to uh, never to die, but you know, now uh, uh, death reigns in our body. Uh, you know, we have a mind, uh, but our minds are corrupted, uh, you know, are, uh, are darkened. We cannot fully comprehend or fully understand uh, uh, God. And hence, uh, a lot of things uh, that, that have changed. We have uh, we had a will, a will to just obey God and do His will. But now, when we sin, you know, uh, or sin came into existence, uh, we were born in sin. Uh, we uh, choose to, at times, go away from the will of God. Uh, we have a mind where we could comprehend and understand God, but now we have a mind that finds it difficult to understand and comprehend God because uh, it is uh, it is darkened or it is uh, covered with sin or uh, covered with the guilt and shame and disgrace. Uh, and hence, we cannot fully understand God. So when we talk about we are created in the image and likeness of God, we represent God in some areas and not exactly just as He is. Okay, so we look at some specific aspects of our um, likeness to God, our moral aspects. Uh, we are create we are creatures who are uh, morally accountable before God for our actions, and uh, we see that corresponding to that accountability, we have an inner sense of right and wrong. Okay. Uh, and we know that uh, you know even people who do not know the living God. Uh, God says they uh, have no way they make excuses because their conscience holds them accountable. So it's our conscience also will hold us accountable. Our conscience is something that God has given us uh, to know uh, what is right and what is wrong. And with God's help, we can do what is right. So we have an inner sense of what is right and wrong. Uh, and when we act according to God's moral standards, our likeness to God is reflected in our behavior, uh, in the way we uh, act, in the way we respond. That is, uh, you know, we respond in a holy and a righteous way before man and before God as well. But by contrast, you know, when we uh, when we sin, we are not like God. Okay, but when God created us in His image, He basically created us without sin. We knew no sin. Uh, but when we uh, when had a belief of, you know, sin, the sin came into the world, and so sometimes we can be like God uh, whenever we sin. Okay. Now let's look at uh, uh, the mental aspect. Okay. So Isaac uh, has just mentioned something. Okay. Before that, Nicholson says 
Does it matter that in verse 27 it says that God made us only in his image and does not mention his likeness again? Uh, no, it uh, really does not uh, matter because, uh, you know, when the writer is writing, sometimes, uh, you know, as I said, for the original readers, they had this whole understanding about this, the, the word image and likeness. So even if we were writing, uh, 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 something or recording something, you know, sometimes we would uh, not use the same word. You would think, okay, I already used image and likeness before, so I'll just use image here. So it yeah, really does not uh, matter because image and likeness means one and the same. Okay. Uh, I hope I answered that, Nicholson. Okay. Isaac says, in the image of God, can we say that we have the mind of God? Uh, God created and created the known things in houses, ways of so God speaks of things in it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, thank you for that question. So, yes, I said that when we are created in the image of God, we are not exactly like God. We are not omnipotent all-powerful, that when we uh, speak something, uh, you know, it comes into existence. But yes, the Word of God clearly says that when we declare His Word, when we speak the Word in the natural, we, uh, we would see His Word come into being, uh, uh, doing the things uh, uh, that was not, will, uh, will come to existence, will happen, because it is God's Word, He has spoken what God has already uh, spoken, but uh, like I said, you know, um, when we were talking about uh, the image of God, the original readers had this clarity in their minds that we have the intellectual ability, the moral purity, the spiritual nature, uh, and also the creative uh, ability to create things and uh, to make ethical choices. And hence, yeah, we can, uh, you know. Uh, do things in a creative way because uh, we have the likeness, we have the image of God in us. He's created us to be with, like Him in certain aspects. And so, yes, we do have uh, the creative mind of God. And uh, and we say that we have the mind of God? Uh, yes, because uh, that's what uh, uh, Paul writes and says, you know, we have the mind of God. When we're born again, uh, you know, when our spirits are born again, we can have the mind of God. That means uh, our minds can perceive, can understand, uh, can, uh, can uh, discern what God is speaking to us, telling us, and doing uh, what he wants us to do. Okay. So did that help, Isaac? Yes, ma'am. God loves us above all creatures. So he made us exceptional in his image. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, when we were looking at uh, the, uh, okay, we were looking at the mental uh, aspect, how we are um, uh, like God. Okay, so we looked at the moral aspect, and now we look at the mental aspect. Uh, we have the ability to reason, to think logically, uh, to learn, and to have varied uh, emotions, just like God. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, our relationship aspect. Uh, how are we in our relationship or in a relation aspect uh, like God? Uh, in addition to our unique ability compared to the rest of creation to relate to God, uh, there are other relationship uh, aspects or relational aspects of our being in God's image, uh, like the depth of uh, interpersonal uh, harmony that uh, people experience in human marriage and in a human family uh, when it functions according to the principles or the godly values or godly principles. Uh, so. Uh, if our marriage is according to God's uh, principles, um, according to His will, and according to His standards, then uh, you know we experience the depth of the relationship that we have uh, with God. 
or um, even also, you know, how uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit relate to each other in perfect unity, and even among the human family, uh, you know, uh, in the midst of the human family, when you know, there is perfect unity, there's oneness, uh, and we abide by God's principles and God's laws, uh, again, we experience uh, uh, our relationship uh, with God and how God relates with uh, each other in the Trinity and uh, also, you know, uh, how really God relates to man and how we can relate back to him. And likewise, in a church, uh, you know, in a community of believers, when there is unity, there is oneness, uh, we are walking in fellowship with the Lord and with each other. Uh, again, we uh, experience uh, the relationship aspect with God or the likeness of God is seen uh, in our uh, relationships with uh, church members, in the church community, among family members and uh, with our spouse as well. So in all of these areas, we show forth the likeness of God and that depends only when we are functioning according to God's principles and according to his standards. Okay. Before we close, we look at uh, the next one, the spiritual aspect in our likeness to God. Uh, we know that uh, you know, man is primarily a spirit being. Uh, like God, God is also a spirit being. And we relate to God in the spirit uh, and because we are spirit beings, therefore we can relate to God in the spirit in the way we pray, praise, and even we hear God speaking to us in our uh, spirit man. Okay, in our spirit man, we uh, not only have our physical bodies, but we are uh, made up of our body, soul, and our spirit. Uh, so our body is our outward uh, structure, our outward form. Uh, our soul is made up of our mind, will, and our emotions, and of course, we have our uh, spirit man. Okay, uh, so we can therefore act in ways that are significant in our uh, in the spiritual realm because you know it's in our spirit man that uh, communicates with uh, God, who is spirit, uh, communicates in the spiritual realm, uh, and so this means that we have a spiritual life that enables us to relate to God as uh, persons when we pray, when we praise Him, and when we can hear Him speaking to us uh, clearly with what He is trying to uh, tell us. Okay, So we are connected with the spiritual life. Um, in fact, you know, our spirit man, our spirit doesn't die. Uh, you know, it never ceases to exist, but will live forever. Okay, when our bodies are dead, our bodies are buried, but it's our spirit that uh, goes up. And so, uh, you know, our spirit is immortal, and it will never cease to exist, and it will live forever. Uh, so we are uh, spiritual, uh, we are spirit uh, person, our spirit faculty, our spirit man, uh, relates to God, a spirit, and to our spirit senses of seeing, hearing, uh, you know, touch, smell, taste, we can uh, also experience a God who uh, hear from the Holy Spirit even as he communicates to our a spirit man. Okay. Any questions, any doubts? We just have one more minute. No questions. Okay, uh, I'd like to remind you that uh, uh, 14th, which is the coming Monday, is uh, the test on Christology, uh, the first four chapters. Uh, and then I think it's March 4th, right? Is uh, the test in uh, uh, doctrinal foundations, right? That March 4th. Anyone remembers? Yeah, I think it's March 4th. Yeah. Okay, so this coming Monday uh, will uh, be your test uh, in uh, Christology. Uh, I'll just uh, put up the question paper and I'll give you some time to answer it and also uh, clear instructions so uh, you'll have no doubts. Okay?
Okay, thank you all for joining class today. Uh, have a good day, and I will see you on uh, Friday for our next class where we continue about the doctrine of mind. Thank you, everyone. Bye.